So hi team, welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about retrieval augmented generation. And the reason why retrieval augmented generation is important is because most often large language models hallucinate or give the wrong answer. The reason for them being hallucinating is they are trained up till you know one point of time. For example, let's say 2021 or 2022. So they don't know the context of what specific questions you want to ask for. So if you have some specific domain specific things and you want to ask for them, they might not know that. So what you can do is you can provide them the context and that's how they can improve the answer. So typically uh, what we do is we are going to again talk about in the next flow. We typically use vector databases as step one to store some of the uh, domain knowledge and then we pass on this uh, specific domain text as such to large language models. In this video also I'm going to talk about something called GGML which is a library for you know working with large language models on a commodity hardware on let's say a CPU hardware which is like pretty much uh, low in resources so the memory is low and that's what we are going to see. So we are going to see that how do they perform compared to a commercial model like OpenAI ChatGPT. So in this video OpenAI ChatGPT 3.5 will be compared with one of the GGML model of Llama 2 and again this will be again compared with Falcon 7B instruct GGML model. So let's see how it goes on. Let's see the flow. So team, this is the typical flow of retrieval augmented generation. So what we do is we have uh, enterprise data and typically these are all text. What we do is we create embeddings out of it. For example, we can use OpenAI's ADA or we can use sentence transformer from Hugging Face. And we store this embeddings into something called vector store or vector databases, which typically are very popular nowadays. So there are typically, you know, open source as well as commercial solutions available. So here, for example, I have identified all the open source solutions, which are pretty much popular. So in the previous videos, I have worked with PostgreSQL as well as open search and face. So that's uh, where all the embeddings are stored. Now, once this embeddings are stored, what we try to do is we try to retrieve these embeddings using some query. Now, this is a normal flow. The problem with this flow is that, you know, uh, when you retrieve embeddings, what you will have is uh, you will have those chunk of text which are very relevant to it. And those are what are extracted. But what you need to do is you need to process them little further. And that's where, you know, uh, these large language models can come into the picture. So what you can do is you can typically query for the most relevant documents from this knowledge base. And once you retrieve that particular uh, chunk of text, what you can do is you can do uh, something called in context learning where you ask specific these large language models and try to find out some specific answers. So for example, this will be a large text and let's say you want to summarize it. So you might either call, you know, OpenAI, ChatGPT or Llama or Falcon or, you know, T5 as such to summarize that whole document. So this is what retrieval augmented generation is different from typical flow. And what in this video we are going to do is we are going to compare, let's say, OpenAI, ChatGPT with respect to Llama 2 and Falcon. Uh, and see what's a typical difference between, you know, all three of them is for, you know, one or two use cases. Now, what we are going to do in this video is we are going to use something called GGML. And uh, if you know as such, GGML is such, as such is uh, typical, you know, models which are quantized for working with CPU rather than GPU. 
so these uh, models are pretty much you know lighter and they can be called into a google collab with let's say only cpu uh, that's what the typical use case is so let's walk through the code as such if you want to know more about ggml here is the link and basically what it tells you is that you know ggml is a c library what it tries to do is it tries to quantize the model original model for example a llama 2 model and it tries to quantize in a way that it's much more cpu friendly so it runs on less number of resources so it can typically work on a you know normal hardware also one caveat is that uh, the performance as such is not typically as good as the original model so if you have llama 2 for example the original model as well as llama 2 with ggml what is going to happen is the original llama 2 might perform little better that's what the general consensus is now what we have is we have a library called c transformers and it's typically a wrapper around ggml so what you can do is you can you know use all the supported models as such and use them uh, with ggml support so you can run all these models within cpu if you have you know specific ggml compliant models for these base models so let's say for example uh, this is one of the such models so if you see it's you know falcon 7b instruct ggml and uh, shout out to bloke as such for you know producing all such ggml models which can work on cpu and typically what happens is you can use all these uh, models just like any other models using frameworks like langchain so in the c transformers for example which is a wrapper for uh, this ggml library what you can see is you know you can call this pretty easily and uh, there is a wrapper as such so you need not to worry about the internals as such it's pretty easy to call so yeah let's uh, see the code as such for the demo let's have a walk through of code so what we have is uh, we have this collab notebook so first of all, what we are doing is we are mounting to the respective drive. Then what we are doing is we are installing different libraries, for example, C transformers, Langchain, and OpenAI. And uh, then we are installing Chroma DB as well as Sentence transformers. So that's what uh, we are doing. Chroma DB by default uses uh, a model called mini lm for sentence transformers so you need me no need not to explicitly provide the specific model that can be used for embedding so that is how you can use the default functionality so here is like typical demo of chroma db so what you can do is you can create an instance like here you can define the collection and just understand collection as you know nothing but a repository or you know database as such and what we can do is uh, we can then you know embed the different documents within it so for example here i have put a document which talks about governing law and then the second document is some dummy document again i just wanted to keep the scope small so that's why i just inserted two documents uh, what you can again do with chroma db is you can store it and data retrieve it and all but for the demo sake what i have done is i just stored it here in the memory i have not stored or saved in the disk so once you store in the memory embeddings are done what you can do is you can query so basically once these documents are stored you are querying and you are saying give me only one result which is very similar to this query if you see these two documents as such or these two lines as such uh, this specific sentence which is governing law and jurisdiction actually is very similar to the query so that's where you retrieved this 
So this is again helpful if you have plethora of documents, you have millions of documents, rather than having, you know, working with LLM directly, what you can do is you can retrieve the most important documents, most relevant documents, and then in the second stage, when you are using a large language model, you can use the things which you have retrieved from this uh, embeddings and use that as for in-context learning. So that's what we did. So basically we retrieved only one result, which is very similar to this. And this is the result, which talks about you know, something like governing law and jurisdiction for the laws of England and so on. So this is the step number one, typically what you will do. Again, in the for the second step, uh, what I've done is I imported all the credentials, for example, open AI keys, open API keys and all. And then what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to compare uh, Llama to 7B chat with respect to Falcon 7B instruct model as well as open AI model. And again, the thing which uh, should be noticed here is all models that are uh, that I'm using are GGML models. So if you see all the things which are running as such are running on, you know, uh, normal CPU. So my runtime environment, if you see, it's, you know, Python 3 with, you know, none of the hardware accelerator. And again, it's a standard runtime. So it's not a large machine. So that's what we are trying to do. So first of all, what we did is using Langchain, we opened this GGML model, which is Llama 27B chat. And, uh, you know, there are some configurations that we get. Uh, for Llama 2 to use, I think you require a license. So I have already filled for that. So I hope you also fill for the license. And that's how uh, you should be doing things. Now in Llama 2 as such, uh, this is typically the format of the prompt. So basically you have some specific things which you can ask. These are the system prompts. And then, you know, this is the typical format uh, by which you can put the question and the context. So what I am trying to put it here is again, this context P is you can get from the step one from Chroma DB or, you know, any other uh, vector database. So you are actually retrieving the most relevant single document and then you are doing in context learning so you are asking you know governing law is considered in accordance with what from please retrieve it from this context so the answer that i got is english law if you see as such the answer which has been mentioned is in accordance with the laws of england so that is the answer now the answer which we retrieve is, is english law now semantically it's correct because you are talking about laws of England and you're talking about English laws. So Lama actually, I would say predicted okay results. I would have been happy if uh, we would have got, you know, laws of England rather than English law, but that's what Lama predicted. Now the same thing I did with Falcon 7B also. So again, using C transformers and again, a GGML model I loaded this and then gave it some prompt as such uh, again uh, the answer that I got is the parties agree that this agreement should be governed by English law and the answer is English law now what I feel is you know maybe I can change some prompt here I'm not using the right prompts and maybe I can get the more specific answer but again just like Lama 2 the answer which is gave which it gave was English law and this seems to be pretty okay. I won't say 100% correct, but that seems to be okay. Now with open AI 3.5 turbo, the newest model, uh, which was released again, I gave the same sort of prompt. So, uh, that's what I did. And I don't think so. This is required. So this was additional, but, uh, basically you gave a prompt and what you are saying is governing law is construed in accordance with what and this is the context and the answer that it gave is the governing law mentioned in the context is the law of England. So I think this answer is much more better than the previous two answers. Uh, but yeah, even Lama 2 and uh, 
Falcon 7, we were very close. The only thing which they extracted differently was they said specifically English law. And, you know, chat GPT gives exactly the law of England. So contextually, they all are similar. So yeah, that's for the video. So in this video, what we did was we understood uh, retrieval augmented generation where we use vector databases and then in the second step some large language models that's how we do our in-context learning and again this video also talked about something called ggml where we use some quantized model for example llama 2 and for falcon and these models are typically pretty much lighter in nature and cpu friendly maybe not faster enough so when i ran this i found out that they take actually more time rather than less time but at least we saw that you know they are cpu friendly so you know with very much less ram they are able to extract things so yeah team that's it thank you all thanks for watching thank you so much till next time bye